Does anybody want to be anointed today? Anybody need an anointing uh, for their help or somebody else that you know or some situation that you need an anointing? Come on up here, brother. Okay? I'm going to love you the same, and I'm going to back you the same, 
And I'm going to also make sure that you have that right that you can do what you feel like you must do. So remember, let's, when we come in here, and you think about it from here on out too, with all these crazy times, it's not just the election, there's COVID, there's the economy, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, all over the world happening right now. How many remember this many hurricanes in a season? Okay? So, so uh, uh, I can't, I, I, they're going to they're gonna run through the Greek alphabet, then they're going to go through the redneck alphabet. Okay? And so that's going to be the next, you know, I don't know what the A, for, uh, uh, the a will be after. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if it's a small hurricane, it's a little after. If it's not a small hurricane, it's just after. I don't know. So, so again, all this stuff that's going on. So in here, this is a house of healing. This is a house of hope. Y'all say that with me. This is a house of healing. This is a house of hope. This is a house of not divided. Amen. Amen. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> now, with all the crazy mess, all the crazy mess that's been going on, you know, I, I see sometimes people try to tell you some of the craziest things to do uh, when you're in, in some of these crazy messes. I don't know who wrote these, but I'm going to read them to you. And y'all might can get some helpful hints out of this out there. They're just called helpful hints. Uh, are you clumsy? Anybody, anybody here clumsy? Okay, look. You can avoid cutting yourself by slicing vegetables by getting someone else to hold them while you chop. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Number two, you got high blood pressure? Simply cut yourself and bleed for a while, then that thus reducing the pressure in your veins. <laughs> Number three, mouse trap. Place on top of your alarm clock will prevent you from rolling over and going back to sleep when you hit the snooze button. <laughs> you got a bad cough? Take a large dose of laxatives, then you'll be afraid to cough. <laughs> it is helpful hands. <laughs> got a bad toothache? Hit your thumb with a hammer very, very hard, and you'll forget all about that toothache. And most of all, don't try any of these above hands. <laughs> I just thought about all the crazy that's going on. You would appreciate some crazy, helpful hints. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, like I told you now, now, again, I can tell you, in the long run, nobody's happy. Okay? Nobody. Nobody. No matter who won, who lost, nobody's happy because there's so much division in this country. Period. Period. That nobody's happy about all the stuff that's going on. But we can be full of joy with Jesus Christ and we can share the joy. So what we do is we need to go, we need to be healers as we go out of the store. We come in, get refreshed, and then go out. And again, uh, we can do this. It's not impossible because Jesus Christ is not only the great liberator, Jesus Christ is also the great uh, uh, healer and binder together. Okay? So I was going to talk about just Ephesus today, the first church. And as I started studying and studying, studying remember I told you I'm doing this one week at a time, I began to realize that maybe just going straight to Ephesus might not be the best thing because there's so much going on in the world and, and we really today, especially today and in the months to come, period, this is not a political statement, this is a prophetic statement. We literally need a good old dose of hope and a good old dose of who's ultimately running. Okay? No matter who they say in the end won the election, they're not running the show. No. Okay? And I can promise you, once the four horsemen hit, you'll know. And we're going to be talking about the four horsemen, not today. So, so we're just going to talk about, we're going to do a lead-in uh, to, the, to the seven churches. And of course, Revelation, remember, Revelation was to prepare and strengthen the Christians of Asia Minor the seven churches that, that they remained faithful against the impending persecution. That was bad stuff going on back then. I mean, John, he put on an 
Alan uh, Patmos, he's, he, he's mining silver and can't see. He's an old man, he's in his 90s. You know, can you imagine having to mine silver and, and then not, wear, not having adequate clothing and adequate food, eat what you can find, fight wild beasts, fight other people? You know, that's just some bad, bad stuff going on. But also Christians were literally being used, listen to this, Christians were being put on poles and lit on fire in the middle of the streets just to provide light at night for some of the areas. Wow. Some bad stuff. And then the Roman arenas, what they would do is they had certain festivals and they would eventually have to do because it was, it was because of gladiators was not enough. They always played for blood. That wasn't enough. Then they started bringing the Christians in because the Christians were considered too extreme and they were considered uh, uh, a treason, treasonous. So they would take the Christians and they would put them in there about animals eat them, or they put them between chariots and pull them apart, and then the animals would eat them afterwards, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, be speared to death in the arena. And because it was only done on certain holidays, because they wanted more blood, they started coming up with different more holidays so they could put more Christians in the arena and kill them. So it weren't enough to have like the 11 holidays. Now you got 15, 20, 25 holidays. But just, just the emperor decided this is his day. And so again, and the biggest thing was they would not follow emperor worship. They refused to bow down to emperor and burn incense to him. So, so uh, uh, again, there's one thing you got to remember in all of this. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 through 23. It says, Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of our fathers. You, you, you have given us wisdom and might and have made it known to us or me thou what was desired of you, for you have made known to us the solution to the king's problem. God is still in control. God is still in control. And of course, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I think towards you, said, Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. The message says it's so good. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. One thing you got to understand about when the world's in chaos, believe it or not. This is our most dangerous time as being a Christian, but it's also the most powerful time of being a Christian. you got to understand it's a two-edged sword. The reason it's a two-edged sword is because some folks really don't want to hear the Christian message. And in this latter day, the more and more time goes by, the less and less people want to hear the true biblical message, but at the same time, those that do hear is the most powerful time because we are the light shining in the darkness. We've got to keep on going. So, first Revelation, again, Revelation 119, it says, chapter 1, I want you to write down the things you have seen of the Lord's work in His church. Chapter 2 and 3, things which are, that's uh, the Lord's word to His church. And chapter 4 and 22, things which shall be, which is God's word being fulfilled prophetically after his church is gone. And again, we talked about this a few weeks ago, so I'm just trying to bring it in, bring it in clear here. Revelation 1 and 20 says, The mystery of the seven stars which I saw in my right hand. That's Jesus who John saw. Uh, the seven uh, in my right hand and the seven golden set candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which I saw are the churches. Or one is the pastor of the church, and the other is the, the church itself. Okay? So again, what, what does that actually mean? There's Jesus uh, in the seven golden candlesticks or lampstands. Uh, we get comfort knowing that, uh, they got comfort of knowing that, that God was in uh, the middle of the churches and they were being held in His hand. But you know what? We too should know this. We're being held in His hand. No matter what happens in this world, we're being held in His hand. Can you even imagine that? It's 
one thing for me to sit there in my daddy when I was little and be scared to death that my daddy would take me and put those great big arms around me and pull me to him and say, it's going to be okay, son. But can you imagine being in God's hands? Wow. What in the world? So, so he comes to us. He cares for us. He comforts us. We don't have to be afraid. So now, now here it is. Watch this. Seven churches. Y'all say seven. 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 Seven is what? God's number. It's the number of completion. It's the number of perfection. Whenever you see the seven in the Bible, it's always the number of completion. The number of perfection is, is God's special number. Six is the number of who? Man. Man. The Antichrist, six, six, six. Okay? That's the number of destruction. But seven, 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 seven. That's the number of completion. It's the number of power. It's the number of authority. It's something very special. So, so if we look at the, the, seven, the seven churches first, they can be viewed practically. Okay? The reason that they can be viewed practically is they literally are seven congregations. I showed you early on the map. There's seven churches in a circle. The seven churches that John was talking to, they were there. They were literal congregations. Okay? Remember, when God speaks, when you look in the Bible, God has a present reality. That's what he was preaching to, whatever it is. Then there is a future uh, reality or a future prophecy. Then there is an eternal principle. And so here it is. Here's right now the present of seven congregations. But prophetically, they represent seven different church ages. They go from the day of Pentecost until now. Okay? We're in number seven. We're in the Laodicean age. Where we say we're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And God says, yep, you don't understand that you are poor, you're naked, you're poor, you're blind. You, have no, no, you don't even understand the great need you got because you're spoiled. Wow. So, so here it is. Personally, they represent modern congregations. If you've ever been to different churches, you know each church seems to have its own little, own little way. And I'm not talking about the click. I'm talking about each one seems to have its own little way it does things, and it seems to be <clears throat> usually hidden in the, in, in the same direction in some way. So modern congregations, but it also represents each one of us by ourselves, particularly each one. So as you're watching these, as I go over these with these seven <coughs> churches, <coughs> praise God, you need a jackhammer to get in this candy. Oh, there we go. I'll get out in a minute. We have to cut our grass yesterday, and I think I sucked up. I was the bag. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, as we go over these seven churches, I want you not only to be thinking about what's going on by them, but it's imperative that you think about your own life. We are in the last day. Not days, the last day. Matter of fact, we're in the last month. Okay? So, as you go over seven churches, this is not just a history lesson. This is not something, just to say we went over Revelation, these seven churches is a chance for you to examine yourself. And as you examine yourself, this is your chance to make sure you and God are ready for what's coming. Because what's coming is not going to be hunky-dory, uh, all this in a bag of chips, I promise you. Okay? So, again, this is so awesome. He calls each of these churches by name. He calls us by name. He knows us. He's the good shepherd. He knows his sheep. He calls them by name, and they answer him. He calls each church by their name. He gives each church a specific word. Aren't you glad that God just doesn't have a generic word we all just go by? He knows what you need and knows how to give it. Everybody in here, we're all different. I got twin brothers, born three minutes apart. Their own, own children, when they were small, could not tell them apart or go to the wrong one. They looked so much alike. People have messed them up for years. I remember Pamela County, going to Pamela County School. You got on the bus to go to art class. Gary got on at third period. He got off the bus. Uh, to go to our class, and then the fifth period, Larry got on, and the teacher made Larry get off. <laughs> Said, you can't 
Yeah. He said, why not? I'm signing up for class. She said, you just went for a period. He said, no, I didn't, ma'am. I didn't go for a period. That was my brother, Karen. Right. Get off the bus. They had to prove that they were twins. So he could, they look so much alike, but they're so different. One, one was a mechanic. The other was an artist. One liked to dress like, like, he's, a, like, like he's in jeans, blue jeans, and a, and a sweatshirt. And this over here was dressed up like he's coming out of GQ. Okay? They're so much different the same way. All of us in here, we go to the same church, but that doesn't mean we have the same outlook or the same attitude or the same values. That's why it's important. That's why God chose seven churches to talk to so that you and me, we can examine ourselves. Because I promise you, as we go through the seven churches, you can pick out something specifically about you that can let you see, wait a minute, I think I've done this wrong. Maybe they try a different way. Okay? So, he calls each church by name, he gives them a specific word, and what's so awesome is he gives every last one of them a special, special promise. So again, and again, I won't keep you long today, I always say that, and here it goes. That's right. Okay. So the Lord comes to his churches, and when he comes to his churches, he begins to speak to them. First off, and here's what he's doing for us. This is for us. Look at somebody and say, this is for us. <laughs> Two. Ready? He speaks to them about where they are. When you read, when we start reading these churches, it's going to look, when you feel this, guess what? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. <clears throat> okay? Uh, I hope you don't feel this. But if you do, okay. He speaks to them about where they are. Then he speaks to them about where he wants them to be. Not where you want them to be as far as, well, you know what, God, I think I'm doing good enough. I think, no, no, I'm going to tell you where you need to be, how you need to handle your life. <coughs> and then he comes to these churches with a, a special message of comfort. So you can tell when the Holy Spirit's helping you, when the Holy Spirit's convicting you, when the, when, here's the difference. When Satan, Satan is condemning you, you're left with no hope. Remember this. If some of you right now, if you are hearing a message that condemns you and leaves you with no hope, that's not God. That's Satan. That's Satan condemning you. Because when God convicts you, oh, it hurts at times. But one thing about it, when God convicts you, He always leads you and shows you the way out that you can feel better. So remember, if the message you're hearing leaves you with no hope, that's not God. But if the message you're hearing may have an ouchie to it, but it shows you how to get out of the ouchie, that's the Holy Spirit convicting. Convicting is positive, condemning is negative. Convicting leads you forward, condemning leads you stuck or in the past. So that, that's, remember that, and that's what's going to be seven churches, okay? So now, praise God, I must have hit a save button. I had this all worked out last night. Perfect PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, so, so, each church has this unique introduction, but they're reminded in verse 1 that he has them safely in his hand. I want you to watch this. This is what I've been thinking about since 2020 started. And again, let's just look past the election. Think about 2020. I can't even imagine. I, I was blown away when they said we're going to lock down for 14 days. Let me call on some place to be locked down. I was blown away when they said we're going to start wearing masks. The whole world's wearing masks. I was blown away when I started seeing things back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and then it hit me. This is how, this is it right here, listen. This is how the last day, the last hours, is set up. Listen carefully. I was in Thessalonians, I've said it before, I'm going to keep saying it. It says that, 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 the, the, the son of perdition will not be revealed that he, 
that is the letter that's taken out of the way. That's the rapture. The Holy Spirit in the church, embodied in the church. But he's not going to come or be taken out of the way until there's a great fall away first. It is, it is predicted by, by a lot more people, I mean, by a bunch of people, it's a lot smarter than I am. Okay? I mean, my idea of intellectual stimulation is counting Tim with Big Bird. Okay? That 50 plus percent of the people that left church because of COVID will never return. 50% will never return to church. That's the great falling away. Okay? So, there's the great falling away. There, there's going to be something catastrophic happen. There's going to be a catastrophic uh, a disease. What we got? COVID-19. Look at all the deaths that we've had. Okay? And, and by, the time the, by the time this is all taking place, there's going to be a one world government. Everybody's pulling together. We're all trying to get on the same page. I promise you, in no time at all, there's going to be a one world government. And it says that even a short time with a very late will be deceived. Why? It's because it's all looking like it has to be done to make things work. So, it's going, to, it's going to, we can all be deceived and thinking that, well, now we're getting under control, not realizing, no, now we're getting ready to lose control. The first three and a half years of, Re uh, the first three and a half years of tribulation are not going to be good times. The first three and a half years is called the tribulation for a reason. The four horsemen come on the scene. They're not pretty. They don't bring good stuff. It's not trick or treat. These guys really hurt. But the second part of the tribulation is called the great tribulation. You think the first part was bad, wait until the second part takes up. Okay? So, so, so we see all this going on. So look, look, but you've got to remember, he holds us in his hands. That speaks of being in absolute control. The Antichrist can hurt a lot of people, but the Antichrist cannot hurt God. The Antichrist has a lot of control, but he will not have control over Jesus Christ and what his plan is. Jesus is still in control. So then, then, watch this. And in a society that's out of control, and when it is, our society is lost. Lost. Okay? In a society that's out of control, we, they need to, but I need to know, and you need to know, that Jesus is still in control. Amen? Jesus is still, come on somebody, yeah. Jesus is still in control. We'll give him all that hand back and praise. He is still in control. God is in control. And everybody listen, either Jesus, you've got to tell yourself this, either Jesus is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. That's right. Amen? Amen. Either he's in control or he's not in control. He's in control. Even though we may have to go through things, he's still in control. Even though we're getting ready to see Revelation unfold before our eyes, he's still in control because at the end of the seven years, he comes back on a white horse. And when he comes back on a white horse, guess what? We win! Amen. Amen. Well, come on. We win! Come on. We win! So now, so now here we go. I'm just going to go down this list a little bit. And then I'm, I'm just to show you, so you know what's coming. Over the next few weeks, but except for on first Sunday, on first Sunday, uh, I, I'll do something for December about Christmas. I'll do some Christmas stuff. But, but again, I, I'm going to stay with Revelation because I think this is what we need to see. We really need, the Holy Spirit keeps telling me, we need to check ourselves. We need to get ready because this is going to happen. And when it happens, it's going to happen so fast, you're not going to have time to even think about it. Okay? Uh, 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 all right. Y'all fellas that were in the military, they had you, after you went to boot camp and then went on your training, they had you so programmed that you honestly didn't really have to think hard to do what you had to do because you were already trained and ready to go. Okay? Because remember, we talk about this, you know, when things get happy, if you're not prepared for it, you won't even think. You just start doing whatever crazy is. But if you're, if you're trained, if you understand, you're going to be able to hold your own in all this craziness. Okay? It ain't got crazy. Like, how many think the world's going crazy? Amen. Guess what? Bob Return Overdrive wrote a song just for this time. You ain't seen nothing yet. Bubba <laughs> baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Here's something that you're never gonna forget, right? Bubba <laughs> baby. <laughs> okay. So it's important. It is so important that we keep our head in the game. And so that's why I'm doing the seven churches and I'm 
also do the four horsemen. I'm going to do the rapture. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take you right on into the tribulation. And again, remember this is week by week. So, so some might be a little stronger than others, but it's okay. It's not here to scare you to death. It's here to give you comfort. Amen. Took somebody to tell them. This isn't here to scare you to death. It's here to give you comfort. Okay? Okay? So now, we're going to talk about first the church in Ephesus. It's called the Loveless Church. Next week, you know what we're preaching on? You've lost that love and feeling. Oh, that love and feeling. Yeah, we're going to preach that next week. Okay? The Loveless Church. The next church, Smyrna, is the persecuted church. The next church is Pergamos, the compromising church. Thyatira, the divided church. Sardis, the lifeless church. Philadelphia, the living church. And Laodicea, the lukewarm church. And each one of these were seven churches there. They represent seven, seven church ages. We're in the last church age. And it also represents seven different congregation styles and seven different Christian styles. So you got to remember this. Look, remember I just told you, I just, just, just said this to you. We're getting ready to close. Uh, BJ, get ready to start playing something, bro. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. Philippians. Of course, Romans 8 and 28. We all talk about it all the time, but it's really something powerful now. We are sure to know that God, being a partner in our labor, in all things, work together and are fitting into a plan for the good to those who love God who are called according to His design and purpose. Philippians 1.6 I'm convinced and sure this very thing that He which has begun a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ <coughs> right up to the time of His return developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind again, this is Paul talking, there has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Jesus Christ appears. What it tells me is, number one, if Enoch we were to die before Jesus came back, then our work would keep on going. It would keep right on going. And then we, when Jesus comes back, and we received our rewards. We receive our rewards because your work is on beyond you. Okay? Even though you're dead, your work is on beyond you. I never get in the pulpit about thinking about Brother Hayden and the things that he taught me. He's been dead now for several years, but I think about him often. And I uh, catch myself saying something. And remember, my brother Hayden taught me. You know, so so a lot of things like that. So so your work lives on even though you're gone. Let me ask you a question. What kind of work do you want to do on behind you? I don't want to live a legacy of fear and pain. I want to live a legacy of power and money. But it also means that Jesus Christ comes back. He's not going to come back and find you not able to handle it. He's going to take care of business. So it lets me know that even as we're talking about the seven churches and we start going toward this, moving toward the rapture, we're going to be able to handle whatever comes our way. We can handle it. Because it's God's word, His promise, and He's as good as His word. Everybody's here. Oh, our God is an awesome God. Our God is a powerful God. Our God has His anger. <coughs> He's not up in heaven counting violence. He's not up in heaven thinking, I wonder how this thing's all going to turn out. He's not up in heaven sucking on the bottom of Balak saying, oh no, what if, what if, what if, what if, should have, could have, would have, should have, could have, would have. He's got it all together. He's taking care of business. On the throne. And he's been there from day one. It will not change. Every head bowed, every eye closed. <clears throat> Even today, before we get into the seven churches, <clears throat> I know there's some that have some unrest in their heart.
spirits and I need God assure me that it's all going to be okay. That the sun is going to come up tomorrow no matter what. That God's going to be God no matter what. And that God's got this no matter what. Thank you. 